to help you the next time that you have to negotiate. Everyone here has been in some form of negotiations, right? Yes. yes. What kind of things have you done? Buying a car. Asking for a raise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or buy, and someone said they bought a car. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm going to prepare you for your next negotiation. And then give you a better understanding of the mechanics of that uh, business negotiation. And then finally, how to maximize your position and not alienate people when you do win the negotiation. And that's most, mostly important. I've seen people who are good negotiators, but when they win that negotiation, they, <clears throat> they lose another opportunity to, have to do business with that, with that person. And I want that to happen to you. You know, positions and, and, and uh, are like office and counter office, sometimes called bids. The thing you don't want to do is get yourself locked into a position up front. When you walk in with a predetermined idea of what your you know, of what your position is, you're not open to the other person at all. It takes um, you know you want you want to look at the other person's point of view and start thinking about how they're looking at uh, what they're trying to accomplish also. And you also want to look at the long-term relationship with that person, as I mentioned before. <laughs> now, <laughs> there's two types of bargaining positions. There's hard and there's soft. <laughs> to going too far in either direction. Do you think it's a good, good uh, place no. to be? No. no. Now, I've, se I've seen individuals that have been too hard. They come in with, you know, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. This is where I'm coming from. Right, Alex? What happens? You, the other person really gets their back up? Right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you come in soft, how do you react? You what happens to this? Do you feel like, hey, maybe I've got, I've got the upper hand here? Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, you really do. So you really don't want to go too far the other way. Coming in soft or hot isn't the right way to go when you're coming in for uh, initial negotiation. You really want to focus in on the merits when you start negotiating. You want to be a problem solver. You want to start looking at what the, what the real issues are. The, one of the things, one of the most effective ways that I had for uh, negotiating, when I first started United Asset Trading Company, I would come in and I'd be buying out complete companies of uh, all their equipment. And I was up against companies like GE, uh, capital. These, these are massive companies. And they would come in and throw large sums of money at these companies just to buy particular pieces of equipment. I would walk in and I'd talk to the company that was, the person who was responsible for selling the company, and I would tell them, look, I'm not going to give you the large sums that GE is going to give you. I'll give you this amount, but I will clean out this company completely. I'll make sure that the building is completely cleaned out. Everything is swept up, and I'll have it out by the date you want it out of here. See, GE thought it was all about money. I knew that the person that was responsible for cleaning out that building was more concerned about making sure the building was cleaned out on time and was completely cleaned out, and you didn't have to worry about it, that everything was out of the building. And I got the better deal. GE didn't know what happened, because I'd sweep in under them, get all the equipment, and then I turn around and call GE up and say, hey, I've got some equipment. You want to buy something? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hmm? That's how it would work. Because I took the time to understand what the client really wanted. And that's what negotiating is all about. Truly understanding. GE thought it was all about money. And when you go into a negotiation and thinking and, and try to assume what the what the other person is making the decision on, then you're going to lose. 
You want to be a problem solver. You want to find out what their issues are. That's what I was doing. I was trying to be a problem solver, trying to help them out. Remember last week I was telling you about my friend who owns an Italian restaurant, and a gentleman came in and said, after they planned a whole evening out and it was a very nice dinner, he wanted to renegotiate the dinner. <laughs> was it about money? No. No. What was it about? It was yeah. Having the upper hand or feeling power falling. It was about power. Yeah, if he understood that it was about power and upper hand, the upper hand, he wouldn't have gotten so upset, my friend, and could have negotiated the situation much better. So when you start thinking about it from that point of view, the, the book, Getting to Yes, you asked Michael, there's a book on it. It starts off with a story. It talks about two little children fighting over an orange. And the mother finally gets frustrated, grabs the orange, cuts it in half, and gives it each half to the children, each child. The kids take the, 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 the orange peel off the orange. One kid takes the inside of the orange, the other kid takes the peel and goes off. <laughs> what do you think that was all about? They both wanted something different. If the mom had said, what do you kids want? She had taken the time to say, what do you really want? Do you see? What a difference it makes. Negotiate on the merits of the problem. Be soft on people and hard on problems. Perceive whether or not you trust your opponent. You know, sometimes you deal with somebody and say, like, oh, I'm not really crazy about this person. But I don't care about the person I'm negotiating with. I'm more concerned about the issues at hand. Don't get upset. Although I know most of you ladies have a problem with negotiating with him. Who is that? <laughs> I knew it was somebody. But yeah, don't, you know, stay with the issue. Stay with what's important. Don't deviate from what's, what the important issues are. My son Adam is a terrific negotiator. If I'm going to buy a car, or anybody in the family is going to buy a car, we call Adam up. And he goes down, the first thing he does is he gets all the information he can about the cars. And then we go down, I can't, I can't be able to watch it. I have tears in my eyes for the salesman. <laughs> and Adam will sit down with the salesman and he'll say, he won't embarrass the salesman, he does, he, he does it in a very nice way, but he'll say, we're looking for this car and this is what we want to buy. And here is the cost on that car. And we know this is what you can sell it for. Now, should we go down the street and buy it? Or would you like to sell us the car? It's a very short negotiation. <coughs> Adam sits there and tells us exactly, so say to us, well, tell me what you want to buy for a car for us. He goes right through the, all the options. I can't watch it, but my son Ben, my oldest son Ben, Sits there and laughs. So full of cherubs. That's <laughs> so information is very important when you start negotiating, isn't it? Yeah. I found that out very early when I was dealing with buying out plants huh, of equipment. If I didn't have very good information, it would be a problem. Especially when I went to sell that equipment. If I didn't know what the value of it was. Because I had the same issues, wouldn't I? I would be buying all kinds of office furniture. Did I want the office furniture? Mm -hmm. I wanted all the laser equipment, scanning electronic microscopes. I would have this stuff down in a warehouse I kept in Milford, Massachusetts. My wife would call me up at 10 o'clock at night, wanted to know where I was. I was trimming my fingernails <laughs> with the lasers. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew what that stuff was worth because that's the equipment I dealt with all my life. I had to find out more about the other things, some of the machine tool equipment I didn't understand. So I had to do the same kind of thing. I had to do some investigating, find out what that equipment was worth. So knowledge is very important before you step into a negotiation. Knowledge is everything. So arm yourself properly. And focus on the other person's interest. 
avoid fixing yourself on a bottom line. Now, I noticed it when, when uh, looking at uh, talking to someone about a negotiation, not to say, well, you know, what's your bottom line? I never started off a negotiation that way. I never say, well, let's, let's get right to the bottom line. Try to understand what they were looking for overall. Because if you try to focus in on the bottom line, it ends the negotiation and it could end up badly for you. Actually, part of the negotiation process is, is information gathering, right? Yeah. Have you seen that? Have you gone through that? Where you're gathering their information? Gathering yeah, information, yeah. Sure. And also, you're also, you know, and as you gather their information, maybe something about what your thoughts are. You think that might change at all? What do you think, Alan? Have you ever been involved in something where maybe as you're gathering information about what you might want to be buying, some of your own thinking has changed? Sure. Yes. Ever been involved in buying a house? No. <laughs> if you ever get involved in the, in the buying of a house, as you go out and start looking at houses, boy, yeah. it starts changing, doesn't it? You start thinking about, well, you know, initially I wanted to do this, and I wanted this option, and now I'm thinking a little differently. And if you're a guy, I get sent downstairs. They send, all of a sudden, they send, always send the husbands downstairs to look at the basement. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things you want to do too is, and I found this when you're selling a house on your own too, because we've, we've sold houses on our own, is look at brainstorming. Look for multiple options on how to put things together. When uh, we sold our first house, my wife and I, we didn't use a realtor. And my wife has got a brilliant business mind. And she thought of all different ways of packaging the house so it became more attractive to people. You didn't lay it on the table all at once, do you? No. You might say, what? How would you do it? You might say, what? You come into the house and would you say, well, on the first time someone walks in, you say, well, if you buy the house, we'll shove it in the refrigerator, <laughs> the washer and dryer, all the drapes, we'll give you the lights and the rug, and hey, the dog's yours, too. I think you let them open, right? Just yeah. To figure so, out what, or try to just feel them out. And then if, you want to proceed, but I wouldn't do that until after you have a few. During this whole real estate trial, did you see some interesting things in the paper? People tried to package their house differently. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things did you see? Fully furnished? No. Well, I saw some people include a car. Mm -hmm. oh. Have you seen that? Yes. No, but, I, yes. but they probably can't afford the house, but I don't the car anymore, so yeah. I, I, saw, I saw someone offered a BMW. Wow. With the house they were selling. Or if you buy the house, we'll throw in a boat. Oh, jeez. I'm serious. Trust me, that's part of the Were you in Massachusetts? Yes. All part of the negotiation up front. So look at those options when you start thinking about negotiation, when you're on the other side of selling. Or even when you're buying, when you walk into a house and you say, you know, I like this house. What else can we put on the table? What kinds of negotiations can we put on? Maybe he won't meet our price, but he might go for it if we say, well, you know what? I'm off you this and say, I really can't go that low. Well, how about this when you throw in the dog in the refrigerator? Try to use objective criteria. Does anybody know the Godfather movie? Yes. You know, it always seems the guys know the movie and the women don't know the movie. And guys will quote you scenes from it, word for word. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Baby <laughs> oh. guys my age know it word for word. Scarface, I know. Scarface, you probably know pretty well. Was it Tony, Tony Montana? Tony Montana, yeah. I don't know what the original Scarface was. Though. I don't either, actually. Tony something, but it's not bootleg. But use objective criteria wherever you can. Try to, you know, negotiate on the merits.